Hey everybody, so this video is going to cover another Active Directory Certificate Service or ADCS attack. This one's going to be looking again at templates and it's going to be attacking templates that have uh, permissions that allow any user to modify them. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to check for any templates that have this permission and we're going to use a low level user to modify the templates to make it vulnerable to other attacks such as the ESC1 where you can supply another user to be attached to that template um, ending up getting the hash of that other user. All right, so this is our certificate authority. And let's take a look at the template permission so you can see how it looks like on the other side, on the admin side, uh, before we go into Kali and start using the certified tool. So this is our certificate authority. And under here we have our certificate templates. The vulnerable one that we're gonna be looking for is a find me four. To see the permissions, we're gonna go to uh, manage and then look at find me four. Yep, this is one right here. And under security, we'll see that authenticated users have full control over it. So that basically means that if they have full control over it, any user that's authorizing the domain can be changing other things um, on these other tabs. So the main one that's gonna be modifying is a supply and request. And whenever this is checkmarked, then it counts or it's uh, considered to be vulnerable to the ESC1, which is where a enrollee can provide another user to be attached to this template, which leads to um, grabbing the hash of that other user uh, from this certificate once you get it. So this is how it looks on the other side of things on the admin side. So the authenticated users has this full control. Uh, so whenever we go into fixing, we'll basically just uh, untick mark this and just have it to enroll or read. So let's get out of here. Let's go to our Kali box um, and look at the, the way that an attacker will look at things. So to enumerate ADCS in the domain, we'll be using the certified tool using the find command and then passing a user's credentials. This is a low level domain user with no permissions at all in the domain. And I like to give the DCIP so it won't have any issues enumerating the domain. And if you run it just like this, it will save it into um, a couple of files, a text file and a JSON file and then zip it up for Bloodhound. If you just want to print it out onto the screen to just SCD out, press enter and it'll start enumerating. It'll have different methods of um, how it enumerates. So you'll get like the errors in the beginning, which says this because it's trying different methods at uh, the top under certificate authorities, it'll show all the certificate authorities in the domain. In this case, I just have this one right here. So this is the uh, DNS name or the actual host name of the machine. And once you have a um, Windows server in your domain, you can add roles and features to that. So whenever you add the ADCS or certificate authority uh, feature or role onto a server, then you create uh, a CA name which is different than the actual host name. So right here you see two different names. So this is the name of the certificate authority or the like service that's running on it, the ADCS service. And this is the host name of the actual machine. Um, and these distinctions will become important once you go into running some of the um, commands in Certify, because you'll have to apply the CA name for certain flags and then the DNS or host name uh, for a different flag. So if you get these mixed up, then uh, your commands will get mixed up and um, they'll end up failing. But that's the distinction. And um, if we scroll down, it shows different templates. These right here are the templates um, right on their CA, uh, the certif uh, certificate templates. And it'll list um, each of the templates, whether they're enrolled or not enrolled. Uh, you can put a flag on the Certify to just show um, enabled, I should say, enrolled or enabled. And if we scroll down, we have our Find Me 4 template right here that's vulnerable to the ESC4. And each template, if it's vulnerable, will list right here if it's vulnerable. And then it'll list type of vulnerability that it's vulnerable to. And this ESC X or ESC4, that's labeled in the white paper. It has um, information for each of the ESCs. Um, in another video, I did ESC1. So I have another template that's vulnerable to ESC1. And if you output this into the file instead of SCD out, then you could just grep for the text vulnerable um, and then just filter through to uh, get more information. The ESC4 um, is for dangerous permissions. So in this case is gonna be the authenticated user has um, rights or more specifically full control over the template. 
So what we're going to do is use this CertiPipe tool uh, to modify this template and to make it vulnerable to something like this. So it'll have all these um, ESCs uh, vulnerabilities onto this template. So now that we know the template name, which is going to be find me for we set up our next command, uh, which is going to be modifying that template itself. All right, let's just walk through this command. So it's going to be the same certify tool. This time we're using the template command and we're going to pass the same domain user credentials. We're going to give it the template that has a vulnerability, which is going to be find me for and this flag right here is a very important because it's the it's called save old and it saves the original configurations of that template so that way we can change it back once we're done um, in a real environment this is very important because you're going to be making changes in a client's environment so having the ability to just change it back um, it is really crucial because uh, it can be upset if you start modifying configurations in their environment um, even if it's just permission stuff they can still get upset. So having the save old option is very important and um, you may want to contact the client before doing this just in case, like I said, they, they might not be happy with you making configurations. And then after that, you just apply the DCIP, like again, so it won't have any issues authenticating or finding any information or changing anything in the domain. So let's click enter. It shows that it saved the old configuration into a file it's called findme4.json. It updates the template to make it vulnerable um, and then gives you the successfully updated findme4. And if we do ls, we can see that that file did get created. And this is the one we're going to be using to uh, change it back. So if we do uh, cat findme4, these are the original configurations of that template. So it'll use this to change it back into what it was before the modifications. Now, if we run that uh, certify finds to enumerate the domains again. We should see that we get the find me for template to be uh, vulnerable to the other uh, ESC1 and so forth vulnerabilities. So here's the find me for, and if we look down, uh, we see the ESC4 that was there before, but it's also vulnerable to some more misconfigurations that we'll be using to exploit to escalate privileges. And right here, the employee supply subject, uh, that's going to be where we can supply different uh, user to be attached to the certificate. So now let's abuse that. And this is considered the ESC1 attack. So right here, this command can look a bit scary, but we'll go through each of the flags on here. And like I mentioned before, it's very important to distinguish the CA over the host name of the certificate authority. And you'll see in this command. So first we'll use the certify tool again. We'll be requesting a certificate from the template. So we'll be using the rec um, option. And then we'll be using the flags to pass the user and password of the low level um, domain user. Now this is the name of the certificate authority, not the host name. So not the DNS name, the actual certificate authority. And then we'll be passing the host name or that DNS name that was given at the uh, beginning of the certify find command. So we'll pass target and then pass the name of the server, the actual host name. We'll give it the vulnerable template name so dash template and then uh, find me for and then the user that we're going to try to escalate privileges to so this would be like an enterprise admin um, domain admin or if you're trying to get more specific you could do other users too but i just usually go for a domain or enterprise admin and again passing the name of the or passing the IP of the domain controller. So it'll authenticate a lot easier and you won't have any um, issues. Press enter. Yeah, you can see that it successfully requested their certificate and it got the certificate of the domain admin. And then it saves the certificate and private key into a .pfx file. So if we do ls, we can see that it's .pfx and then it'll be named after the user that you requested a certificate as. So with this, the uh, certificates, they the way to have it set up is that um, the NTLM hash is inside the certificate just in case there's any issues through Kerberos authentication. Microsoft has just have it, has it set up to where um, the NTLM hash is stored inside of there. So now to get the NTLM hash of that user, we're again going to be using the certify tool and we're going to be using the auth to authenticate. We're going to pass the file of that .pfx which is uh, gandalf.pfx or it'll be the user that you have uh, .pfx and then again the DCIP. It'll authenticate and then it'll show a got hash for that user and then provide the hash 
of that NTLM hash of that user, which we can use next to verify that it's uh, correct. And I like to use the crack map exec tool for that. So we'll be using crack map exec because you can pass the hash with this tool. Uh, we'll be using the protocol SMB, the machine that we like to authenticate to, which uh, will be a domain controller because if you are able to have um, admin access on a domain controller, then you essentially can have access on uh, all the computers in that domain. Uh, we'll be using the user that we got the hash for and then the hash itself. Um, and I just like to list shares, but you can put whatever option right here if you like. And once you press enter, it'll show pwned. And what pwned means is you have system access on that machine and it'll have the green pluses to show authentication was successful. And um, the way that it declares that it's pwned is if you have read write access on the C share. So whenever you have read write access on uh, the C share of any machine, then it means you have administrative access on that machine. So with this, we can say that we have uh, domain admin access in the environment. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we created that, or we kept the backup uh, configuration of that vulnerable template. So now uh, we can be a good um, tester and then make changes to save the old configuration onto the uh, template. So for that, we'll be using our certified tool again. Uh, we'll be doing the template option, uh, again, past the domain user credentials, the template that we're gonna be modifying, which is find me for the DCIP. So all this right here is pretty much the same command that we ran earlier to uh, perform the change, except now we're gonna be passing the configuration flag and then pass that file that it saved to. So yours would be um, the name of the template.json. And whenever we press enter, we'll get the updating and then successfully updated um, template. And so if we run the certify find command again, then we should show that it's not vulnerable to the ESC1 or the other ones, it's only vulnerable to the ESC4. So right here we have uh, find me four. We could see enroll a supply subject is now set to false. And then if we scroll down, um, it's only vulnerable to ESC4. So all the other uh, ESC1, 2, and 3 won't work anymore. And we can try that out by um, going up and trying to run that request command. Try to request a certificate from that find me four template and then give it a, a UPN of another user. So if we press enter, um, you can see that it doesn't successfully request that certificate. It gets a failed certificate. So we know that the template is back to the uh, previous way of how it was before we touched anything. So again, if you're running this, you are gonna be modifying some of the configurations or permissions on a template. So I would like to just advise that you might need to contact the client, to let them know to give them a heads up if you think that's gonna be an issue. Uh, but if you do the save old flag, then it'll save the old configurations like we showed, and then you can just change it back. Okay, now to go into the remediation, which I forgot to record, so that's why there's no camera. We just log into our certificate authority server, and on the top right, just go to uh, certificate authority. And we just find the vulnerable template, which is find me four other certificate templates. Uh, this one, we could just delete it. And we're going to go change the property set property settings. So just manage, find the templates, which is right here, find me four. And under security for authenticated users, we're just going to uncheck mark the full control, the write, and auto enroll. So it's just enroll and read. And we could check the domain users to make sure it's the same as well. Just click apply and OK. And now we can issue that template by going to new certificate template to issue and just looking for that template which is right here click OK and we see that it's there so now we can go check on our Kali box and run the certify tool again to see if we're finding if it's uh, vulnerable to that same ESC4 vulnerability so now we're back on our Kali box uh, we can run that certify find command and if we scroll up to find the ESC or sorry the find me four we'll see that the authenticated users are no longer in the full control permissions. So it no longer has that um, vulnerable to ESC4 misconfiguration. And so that's a quick fix to the vulnerability, just changing the permissions to have the low level users such as authenticated users and domain users to only have the read and enroll permission on a template.
So that's pretty much um, how it runs. It's pretty or very easy to to perform a privilege escalation. I um, also have some other videos on my channel to do other attacks such as ESC1 and the ESC8. And on the ESC8 one, I actually go to the manual way of using LDAP search to enumerate the domain, find the certificates through LDAP search, um, and then a step-by-step -step process of running through the ESC8 vulnerability along with the quicker or automated way that I'd say, um, which is the certified tool. So uh, pretty cool stuff. So feel free to check it out if you want some more ADCS attack stuff. Thanks for watching.